G'day, I'm Kevin from Gilbert's Fine Food and welcome to my home. This video is part of the Bake in the Box series and particularly today we're going to be talking about how to make bagels and pretzels in your home. Bagels have been around for centuries as have pretzels. Bagels originally were supposed to be shaped around the stirrup of a, a saddle on a horse. Pretzels are supposed to be shaped after a monk in prayer which is apparently why it's a fat body and the folded arms. I don't know that, all I know, they are wonderful, they're great toasted, fresh, filled as a sandwich, maybe with eggs Benny in on a Sunday morning. This box has all the ingredients you're going to need to make your bagels and your pretzels. All the ingredients are labelled, let's crack into it. First thing we're going to need is the flour. Now this is New Zealand grown flour, so it comes from pretty much just up the road. If you've got a mixer, fantastic, use it. I have, so I'm going to. If you haven't, you can mix this by hand. Uh, there are hundreds of videos that you can watch on how to do that. So just put the ingredients in all together. The flour is in first up. And then all the other ingredients are in your little pottles. Just steer clear at the moment of the one that's titled lye. It's coloured red, just be careful of that one. We're going to use that a bit later on, but for now, the yeast goes in. If you want to use starter culture, if you've got your own lavar at home, grand, you can use that. You can remove the yeast altogether or just reduce it down. It will, of course, change the proving time, but make it like this first time around and then you can start playing. Then you've got the sugar, just standard white granulated sugar, a bit of salt. A lot of people are trying to remove salt. You can't in baking, salt is, baking is science, salt is required. So the salt goes in, and then we've got some honey. Now this is honey from pretty much just across the harbour there from Mihiwaka, and it is very much all Otago honey. That goes in, and if you're anything like me, you don't want the honey to go to waste. Like honey. And the last one, is milk powder. Now, if you're making dairy-free bagels, you can absolutely remove the milk powder. Just replace the water we're going to use with whatever milk replacement you like to use. Coconut, oat, any like that is perfectly fine for this recipe. There you go. Those are all the ingredients except for one, and that comes out of the tap. That's just water. If you've got a thermometer, fantastic, use the thermometer. You're aiming for around 35 degrees is your temperature for water. If you haven't, like me, just use uh, so that it's slightly warm to the touch. You're looking for 400 to 450 mils of water, depending on your mixer, how soft you want the dough, and also whether it's particularly wet, whether it's a humid day or not. Believe it or not, that makes a big difference to the way you're going to be doing it. So I've got just over 450 mils of water. I'm going to put most of it in, hold back a little bit just in case I need to make it a little bit softer. And all that lot is done over at the mixer. Okay, about five, seven minutes later, your dough is going to be mixed. You're wanting something soft-ish, but also quite firm, if that makes sense. You want it to be malleable and so, it's, so you're able to shape it, but you also want it to be comparatively firm whilst you're doing it. If it's not completely mixed, that's not going to be the end of the world if it doesn't look like it's completely mixed. What you often find is that by the time you then just give it a quick, gentle shape, that it's going to start smoothening up. And you're wanting for that surface of the dough to be smooth to appear uh, to look at. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to put that into a metal bowl. I'm going to spray the inside of that with a little bit of tin release. 
And if you're wanting to speed things up even more, you can run the bowl under warm water just to warm it up. Otherwise a cold bowl is gonna remove all the warmth that we just added into the dough and it's gonna slow things down. I won't need to worry about that because that bowl is actually quite warm. So the dough goes in, we're gonna leave that for 20 minutes. But we don't want it to get a skin on it. So if you've got cling film, you can absolutely put cling film over the top. Or if you're like me and you end up having to travel a wee bit, Lots of hotels and motels nowadays still have shower caps and these are awesome to go over the bowl and the ones you can just keep reusing. So there you go. Sits there 20 minutes and we'll come back to it. Whilst your dough's been resting, it's a great time to turn the oven on. About 190, 195, particularly if you've got fan force, put it at 190 and if you haven't got a fan force oven, maybe put it up to about the 200 degrees Celsius. Once that's on, it's nice and hot and ready to go. The last thing you want is a cold oven as soon as these are ready. So, this dough is going to make eight. So we're going to make four bagels and four bretzels. You don't need to be too exact about this. If you want to scale them, you can. I think it's about 160 grams, something like that each. I'm just going to do it by eye. If you have a plastic scraper, Fantastic to use, if not, well worth the investment. If you don't, just use what you have. Sometimes a spatula works really well, otherwise just use your hands and you can kind of pinch them off. But you just want eight, more or less, even sized lumps of the dough. As I say, being exact is not a prerequisite, you just want to be as close as you can. So, don't put the scraper away too far, you are going to want that later on. Now we just want to, what's called pre-shape them. So we're just getting them to kind of be what they're going to end up with, but not quite there. So the first ones are going to be the bretzels. So you want to shape them into a bit of a sausage. Something like that. Doesn't need to be exact, but something like that. Now when you're moulding dough, you want it to be as smooth on the outside as you can. You don't need to do two at a time, it's just I've done this for quite a few years. When you're doing round, what you're trying to do is stretch the surface of the dough and pinch it between either the thumbs, the thumb or the fingers on the bench, and you're just doing that. If you can't do that, don't panic. It'll happen eventually, just keep practicing. In the meantime, you can do that kind of thing. Just make it as round and as smooth as you can. Okay. So we're just going to let those sit for five minutes just to rest a little bit longer and in the meantime we'll put some water on so we can poach the bagels and if you're making bretzel you need to make up the lye solution. That's the last ingredient in your box. You want 500 mils of cold water and your little bottle of lye. Be very careful with this this is a caustic ingredient, which means that it is going to kind of hurt and burn the skin uh, if you're not dealing with it properly. So just be really careful. Open it up, tip, and stir. It's as simple as that, really. It's not rocket science. We're just going to let that dissolve into the water and let that sit to one side. Make sure when you are mixing it that you mix it in either glass or metal. Try not to mix it in a plastic, particularly a soft plastic kind of a bowl because, well, it will eat through it after a short period of time. So make sure glass or metal. Trust me, it's safe to eat, but just do that. Right, our dough has just had five minutes to rest. I've got some water on for poaching the bagels. I've made my sodium hydroxide solution up and that's sitting in a bowl that's big enough to be able to fit a bretzel in. So let's shape the bretzel. What you're looking for is you want it slightly fatter in the middle and you want it longer and, and thinner out at the ends. So to do that, you're just going to roll it between your hands and the bench and encouraging it out. Don't rip it out, encourage it out and go through a few times like that. You can see my hands are also slightly on an angle to encourage the dough to the ends. And when you get it to the length you like, there are two ways of doing this. There is the easy beginner's level, which is crossover, 
cross over again, lie them down, and you have a pretzel. You can either lay it with the arms down or more traditionally with the arms on the top, up to you. If you want to be tidy, put the arms down. If you want to be able to peel the, the arms off after baking, leave them on top. So that's the easy beginner's level way. As you get more comfortable with doing it, there is a little flick technique. The idea is you just put a little bit of a flick on one hand and it flops it over and the arms are down. You've got your pretzel made already. Do you want to do it again? Okay. So roll it out, making sure you're encouraging the dough out rather than just ripping it. Encourage the dough out when you get it to where you want it to be. Lift up, give it a bit of a flick, fly the arms down. And you have a pretzel. One more time. Encourage it out. Again, making sure, because remember this is shaped after a monk, and apparently monks are all fat, or were back when these were invented. And so you've got the fat body with the thin arms to cross over. Give it a wee, whoa, give it a wee flick, and down. Those are then going to be ready for dipping. To do that, you need your glove. You'll find that in the box. If you want to wear one, go for it. If you want to wear two, also go for it. The reason you're wearing this is, as I said, sodium hydroxide is a caustic solution. It will start eating away at the skin and it even softens the fingernails. So always make sure you wear a glove while you're doing it. But what you're wanting to do is make sure it's completely submerged in the solution. Let it dripple off a bit. And it's as simple as that. It's a process called saponification if you want to look it up. It's the same process that they use to make soap and it converts the carbohydrates or the starches on the surface of the dough and turns them into sugars and we get a, a stronger, more pronounced dark brown colour and a slightly so, uh, savoury taste to the bread. Glove off. And at this point, traditionally, a pretzel just gets a really deep cut and a little bit of uh, coarse rock salt or something similar but you can go wild on it. If you want to put sunflower seeds on, go for it. Cheese, cheese and bacon. The sky's the limit. Your imagination is the only thing to stop you. For me, I quite like the traditional. So a good cut. And make sure you're not shy. You want to cut at least halfway through the dough. Otherwise, you won't get it to open up quite the way these have. Helps if your knife is quite sharp. If you don't have a knife that's sharp enough, you can use scissors, go all the way through uh, from end to end, but about half the way through, give it a cut, and with scissors, just lean it back slightly as you're pulling the knife, uh, the scissors away, and that'll help it open up. If you want to put rock salt on, give a wee sprinkling over the fat bit. And that's it. They're ready to go, and straight into the oven. Now we've got the easy one. Now we've got the bagels. And bagels, again, you can do whatever you like. If you want to do straight plain, fantastic. If you want to put cheese on, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, not a problem at all. If you want to mix jalapeno into them, go for it. Just do them once this way, and then after that you can play. The easiest way to get a hole in, into the bagel is to put a hole into the bagel. So you literally just shove your thumb through so that it meets up with your finger on the back. Give it a wee pinch and a wiggle and you've now got a hole. And you can just stretch that out but it gets a little bit messy in the middle. The nicer way of doing it is to pinch it and as you're opening it out just kind of pull the middle out with your fingers. That way on the top I'm getting a nice smooth inner circle. So thumb through to the finger, pinch, and then as you're widening the hole, you're kind of pulling 
the centre out with the fingers. One last time. Again, you want to make sure that your, your, the hole is going to be big enough. If you make it too small, it ends up looking like a bun with a dimple you, because it'll close up when we poach and bake it. So you want to make sure the hole is nice and big. Once you've got that done and the water is on the simmer, you poach those and they'll go straight into the oven. Right, so I've got my water at a very gentle simmer. The bagels go straight in with the surface, the, the top bit down. Because that's going to be the presentation side because we're going to be flipping the bagel and we're going to put it then straight onto the tray. It's about 20, maybe 30 seconds per side when you're poaching your bagel. And the reason you're poaching it is it sort of sets the, the crumb, the interior of the bagel. And it's partly what gives it that traditional chewy texture and taste uh, to it. So after about 20 seconds on one side, you'll notice that they're floating. Uh, they may sink to the bottom as soon as you put them into the pan, but very quickly they should then float to the top. And just tip the bagel over as best you can. And give it another 20 seconds or so on that side. Remember I said right to start with that bagels are supposed to be shaped around a stirrup. The theory is, or the, the myth is, that this is why uh, we poach them as well, was that to try and keep them in that shape. They got poached to start with to set the shape. As it turns out, the war that uh, encouraged or inspired the uh, shaping of the bagel happened about mm, 30 years after bagels were first invented. So it's a complete load of rubbish, but it sounds great. Just use a fish slice or something, a slotted spoon or something like that to get them out of the water. Otherwise you'll end up with a puddle on your tray. As soon as you take the first ones out, pop the, other, the last two in. And if you want to top any of them with seeds, cheese, anything like that, now's the time. I'm just going to pop a bit of cheese on a couple of them. Again, you want to be a little bit generous because cheese somehow disappears in the oven, I find. So you want to make sure you've got a fair amount on each bagel. These can go in exactly the same oven as the pretzel and at the same time. And once we finish poaching these, we're done with the water. So I can turn the element off. Last of the bagels comes out. If you leave them too long before you poach them, they will get a little bit soft. They will perhaps go a little bit flatter than you'd like them. Still going to be perfectly fine to eat. And it's a great way to start. So these go in the oven at uh, the same setting, the 190, 195, somewhere around there for fan force. Uh, and you're going to bring them out when they, what's called tap hollow. So they're going to be nice and golden all over. And when you tap the bottom of them, it sounds like a drum. So the pretzels have been in for about 15 minutes now, about 15 to 18 minutes. And you can see they're just starting to go a little bit brown around the, the rim of the cut. And that's, that's a good thing. We want that to, to just be browning and we want it to, to tap hollow. But because I'm leaving all the heat out, I'm going to take them out and check and leave the bagels to keep baking. The easy way to check it, other than the colour on the cut, is just to hear if it taps hollow. It should sound like a drum. So just tap the bottom of it, hear that? That's what you're listening for. You're listening for it to sound a little bit hollow. You've got to check that as soon as it comes out of the oven, because once it cools down, you're not going to get that same sound because the steam will have gone, and that sound comes partly from the steam. So we're just going to check for the same thing here with the bagels as we did with the pretzels. Don't pick up the one that's got the cheese on it. Tap the bottom, sounds like a drum, that's ready to go. So they can come out. So there we go. We've now got four bagels and four bretzels fresh from the oven. Remember, this is just the starting point. You can play with them as much as you like. The toppings you put on, the fillings you put in, it's all up to you. Your imagination is your limit. 
and also let us know how this goes for you. We'd love to see photos and we'd love to hear how it went for you. In the meantime, I'm going to munch on a bagel.